Hello, the name is Somin Rajgopalan, founder and CTO of Thalia Design Automation. In today's presentation, I'll be talking about why analog IP reuse is a big problem faced by a number of semiconductor companies. I'll also be talking about the need to understand uh, the process technology differences and how it impacts efficient analog IP reuse. I'll go over a case study and uh, then about who Thalia are and uh, our value proposition. What you see here is a classic decision fork faced by a number of semiconductor companies. Design new IPs or uh, build a portfolio of analog IPs. Um, building a portfolio of analog IPs, what that means is uh, designing IPs in uh, different technologies and nodes. Obviously, um, both the approaches have their own advantages and needs. Designing new IPs uh, facilitate uh, addressing new sections of the market. Um, new IPs demand a lot uh, higher uh, um, revenues. And um, it is exciting to designers to work on uh, newer, exciting uh, applications. Portfolio of IPs. Obviously, you get to expand in uh, within an existing market, stabilizes the revenue, and uh, um, stabilizes and increases the revenue. Um, so, what we are able to see from this is it's not an either or situation. How can a company address both uh, designing new IPs and building a portfolio, given that there uh, there are opportunity costs and also shortage of. Uh, design capable design resources. When you look at analog circuit design, you see that it is impacted by a number of factors ranging from device performance, process technology characteristics, market needs, and finally the design methodology deployed within uh, design companies. So this essentially um, makes um, moving a design, reusing IP, almost a redesign. So even a band gap is no longer just a tweak, but it's more of a redesign. Add to this uh, that there are limited usable solutions in the marketplace and a shortage of good analog circuit designers. So this actually makes a difficult problem worse. So hence this begs the question, is efficient analog IP reuse a myth or a dream Following up from the previous slide about analog IP reuse, whether it is uh, a myth or a dream, now let us look at a case study. Uh, and this case study revolves around an audio amplifier, a whisper trigger amplifier, uh, which was migrated from 40 to 22 nanometer technology. Um, this is a four-stage amplifier with comparators at uh, the end, which connect to uh, um, IDSB. So the key application here is um, uh, is power, power savings within uh, SOC, largely by putting the ADC to uh, sleep and activating it only when um, there is a voice detected. That's primarily the application of this audio amplifier here. Now, let's, um, with regards to the case study here, it will encompass um, the circuit and the process technology differences and uh, hence the, uh, the issues the design teams face when migrating IP. So I will talk about it and then I'll go over the, the deployment of Thalia's IP reuse platform uh, and how this was leveraged to identify the root cause of uh, the design issues uh, and hence the kind of solutions required um, this we obviously uh, incorporated uh, topology changes, so I'll talk about it. And um, finally, I'll go over the process deployed by Thalia in uh, getting to a solution and the delivery of uh, the IP. Part of the effort of migrating an IP from one technology to another is qualifying the IP in uh, the target technology. So what you see here is one of the key specification gain max. Uh, of the amplifiers. So the picture on the right shows that the, grain, the gain max um, slopes downward over, temp over temperature. And when you look at the, the, the box on the bottom left, you see that 
The gain max specification ranges from 2 all the way to 16 uh, over corners. What this means is the circuit has not met the requirements in the target technology. And that is a problem. If the, if the blocks, the individual amplifiers don't meet the requirement, the circuit is uh, not functional in the target technology. And uh, this needs to be addressed. Part of the problem um, is because of the MOS transistors in these amplifiers being in tri on triode rather than being in saturation. Now, let's look at how we went about addressing, identifying you know, what caused these problems, what process uh, technology characteristics caused these trans transistors to be in trial rather than in saturation and how we went about addressing it. What we saw in the previous slide was that one of the key specification gain was not being met in the target technology. And it's, it was because some of the devices were in, tri in the trial region and um, we needed to see what, what um, the process technology characteristic was pushing the, uh, the MOS transistors into triode region. Amalia technology analyzer is one of the um, components within the Amalia IP reuse platform. This capability takes a design-centric approach and this is deployed to uh, analyze, compare um, base and target technologies to see how similar or dissimilar the, uh, the process technologies are. We look at uh, first order effects like FTs, GMO or ID, VD SATs, uh, VDS IDS curves, and also second order effects. Using this capability technology, we are able to uh, um, we were able to see that the target technology here, the 22 nanometer, um, as far as the VD SAT was concerned, it was very different to the base technology, and that you know, was the reason why the MOS transistors were moving into the trial region. We'll look into um, the differences more in detail in the next slide. So what we saw in the earlier slides um, was that uh, the devices, some of the transistors were in trial region, and in the previous slide, I introduced uh, the Amalia technology analyzer and um, the effort that happens to um, um, in comparing and uh, analyzing the target and base technology. So what you see on this screen is, um, is a subset of the kind of analysis we perform. Um, and there are the key specifications, the key technology characteristics are listed here. As you can see here, the VTs are similar. However, the VDSAT min between the base and target technology the difference is about 5x. What this means is, when you look at GM over ID at specific VD, VDSAT points of 70 volts and 200 millivolts, what is clear is in the base technology, you can operate the device at closer to uh, 70 millivolts because the VDSAT min is 0 0.036, 36 millivolts. Um, while in the case of the target technology, you can't operate the device at um, 70 millivolts, largely because the min uh, VD SAT is 1.556, which means that you need to operate it closer to uh, the second, uh, the last um, row here. So as you can see here, GM over ID in the first case is closer to 13.58 because of the VD SAT min, while for the target technology, it is closer to about eight and a half or so because of uh, the VDSAT min. What this means is, for a given ID, you have lower GM in the target technology, and to achieve the same GM, you need to pump in more uh, ID. Um, so essentially, uh, this is the root cause of uh, the problem why um, the, the transistors were moving into trial region in the target technology. Um, and we have to, the solution here, is to recover the lost VD SAT so that you can um, have higher gain. So I'll talk about the topologies in uh, the next slide. So what we saw in the previous slide was that the VD SAT uh, between the base and the target technology were different um, by an order of about 5x. 
Obviously, this difference was the reason why the devices went into uh, the triode region rather than being in saturation. So the topology is listed on uh, on the screen. There are three. Um, they're uh, essentially um, put together to recover the lost headroom. I won't go into the detail on the functional functionality of these uh, topologies, but uh, the the motive was to uh, uh, the motivation was to recover the lost headroom. Uh, the key thing, the key mantra uh, here is because of deploying the Amalia technology analyzer, we were able to um, accurately uh, estimate the reasons, the root cause for, uh, the, for, the, for, the, for the circuit to fail in the, uh, the target technology. And we were able to address um, you know, the right solution to make sure that the circuit works in the target technology. Our philosophy at Thalia um, is that targeted design automation works. Full-on automation is difficult and near impossible in analog circuit design. What you see on the screen are uh, snapshots of uh, the automation that was deployed during different processes, various different uh, steps um, in when migrating the circuit from the base technology to the target technology. What you see here are the circuit characteristics after the fixes to the topology. So what do you see at the bottom left is that the circuit now meets the requirement across all corners. And the picture on the right shows that the curves for gain is now almost flat. The range um, of um, gain max variation uh, over temperature is now very narrow. So what this means is the circuit now works in uh, the target technology. As part of um, this IP reuse engagement, we were able to deliver um, both the schematics, the verified uh, data, and uh, the, the layout. I founded Thalia back in 2011. The primary motivation was to improve the overall efficiency and hence, and, and in the process, reduce the cost of analog circuit design, primarily to roll out a unique analog IP reuse platform. The last several years, we have partnered with a um, few IP vendors and we have deployed our capability in uh, numerous foundries and nodes. Um, we are headquartered in the UK with design centers in Germany and India. Why are we unique? At Talia, we are bringing about a paradigm shift in the way analog IPs are reused. We have rolled out a unique platform called Amalia IP Reuse Platform. And this is a combination of proprietary technology, methodology, and design capability. This platform, this, this combination is, uh, is what we call the trifecta. The technology consists of automation uh, capability, AIs, and um, software engineering. Um, Design expertise, obviously aspects of um, analog circuit design it can only be handled by uh, capable designers and uh, methodology is knowing where uh, you can deploy automation and where uh, the expertise could come into play. This is our uh, trifecta. There are four key value propositions that we bring to the table. The first is um, using our platform, supporting our customers in IP migration. This is moving IPs from one technology, process technology, or node to another. The second is generating a portfolio of IPs, um, i.e. creating different flavors. For example, uh, designing different uh, load current LDOs, or different jitters, um, or uh, different frequencies um, in, uh, in a, in a DC-DC converter jitter for a PLL. Uh, the third um, value proposition is IP improvement, um, specifically targeting performance, power, and area, which is something that all IP un uh, vendors uh, would like um, in their IP, you know, something better than uh, the competition. And the fourth value proposition is um, um, delivering um, process technology analysis um, to customers. So this comes into play when uh, customers would like to qualify and uh, compare uh, new technologies, process technologies against uh, existing um, process technologies, their IPs, 
um, are on. So this is something that we have delivered successfully to a number of um, customers. The Amalia IP reuse platform consists of uh, um, technology, methodology, and design expertise. On the technology and methodology front, the, the platform has four components. The technology analyzer, this is something I covered uh, when I went over the case study. Um, in a nutshell, this is a design-centric approach that addresses uh, um, uh, key first order and second order effect of process technologies, extracts and uh, compares um, between the base and target technology to provide um, the user with, um, with clear inputs on how similar the technologies are, the base and target. Um, automated um, circuit porting, this effectively takes in the inputs from the te technology analyzer and generates a circuit. Uh, that could then be verified um, depending on um, how close the circuit's uh, functionality is, circuit's responses um, in the target technology. Uh, we then deploy the design enabler along with uh, design expertise and we nudge the design back into specification. And finally, layout migration. This capability is about putting together the base layout framework which is then expanded by uh, experienced layout designers. At Talia, we have a track record of working on uh, applications ranging from baseband all the way to our front-end um, applications. So what you see on the screen are uh, examples of uh, design reduction to the design cycle time that we were able to bring um, on customers' design. Uh, we are partners of choice uh, with multiple IP vendors uh, in Europe and uh, what you see here are time savings up to about 50% on applications ranging from PMIX all the way to Wi-Fi IP. And what you see on the screen is uh, one of our partners. So we've worked on uh, a number of um, Wi-Fi's and Bluetooth IPs and uh, we have delivered silicon validated uh, solutions um, to this customer. And as you can see here, there is uh, an acknowledgement of uh, reduction to the design cycle time and uh, improvement to efficiency that we have brought uh, to their design flow. To recap, Atalia, we are bringing about a paradigm shift in the way analog IPs are reused. This is through Talia's unique IP reuse platform called Amalia, um, which is a combination of uh, proprietary technology, um, methodology, and design expertise. We have a track record of working on applications ranging from baseband all the way to our front-end applications. Uh, we've delivered reduction in de design cycle time up to 50%, and in the process, reduction to the cost of um, reusing IPs as well. We have a proven track record of working uh, on a number of uh, nodes and technologies, and uh, we are happy to help you. Um, so if you would like more information about how Thalia can help you in uh, um, more efficiently reusing your IPs, please get in touch with us. Thanks for your time.